It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to safely remain open as we continue to navigate COVID-19. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. Adafruit is stocked and all orders are shipping. Expect possible delays as we continue to ramp up. Now is the best time to get orders in for your favorite products, including items for students. To find the latest Adafruit products and all of the essentials you love, visit adafruit.com. This past week, the subscriber count for this newsletter surpassed 8,000 members. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. We appreciate that you've chosen this newsletter as the source of your Python news. We'll continue to provide you with weekly updates of all things Python on microcontrollers. Thanks again, and stay tuned. Use a Raspberry Pi with Python as a USB MIDI host. Liz Clark has her Pi connected to a MIDI keyboard and output through either a Eurorack with a CircuitPython-powered Winterbloom Soul module, or a CircuitPython-powered relay-driven xylophone. Details available from Blitz City DIY on Twitter. This is another wonderful cosplay prop in progress at Kamui Cosplay. Bolvar's Mace uses an Adafruit feather and a PropMaker feather wing to provide lights, shake detection, and sound. Details available from Kamui Cosplay on Twitter. A new book is out this month, Working in Public, The Making and Maintenance of Open Source Software by Nadia Eggball. Recommended by Python creator Hiro von Rossum, it is an inside look at modern open source software developers and their influence on our online social world. Available on Amazon. You can also check out Nyafia on GitHub for more interesting information on open source from Nadia. In this week's CircuitPython Deep Dive livestream, Scott streamed his work on adding PSRAM support to the ESP32-S2 port of CircuitPython. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deepdive. CircuitPython Day is September 9th, 2020. Adafruit has chosen 9-9-2020 as the snakiest day of this year for CircuitPython Day. Much more to come on events and happenings to include a CircuitPython team livestream, collaboration with hardware and software folks, and highlighting all things Python and Python on hardware. This year's CircuitPython Day is being dedicated to Lambda Labs Makerspace, who are helping during the Beirut disaster. More information on CircuitPython Day is forthcoming. There is a working calendar on GitHub available at adafru.it slash cpdayschedule. Do you have ideas or suggestions for CircuitPython Day? Are you planning your own CircuitPython Day event? Let us know via email at circuitpythonday at adafruit.com, or submit a PR to the calendar on GitHub with your event information. These great CircuitPython Day graphics are courtesy of Kevin Matoka, who states, I'm learning how to contribute to the CircuitPython core code. I added a faster way of copying or blitting bitmaps. With this bitmap.blit function, it is possible to rainbowify text. Details available from CycleMatch on Twitter. Liz Clark is also working with graphics, making versions of the dancing parrot on an Adafruit clue board. Details available from Blitz City DIY on Twitter. This circuit Python powered e paper display shows the current phase of the moon. Details available on hackaday.io and from Microchip Makes on Twitter. The Trinket Touring Machine is an Adafruit Trinket M0 based Eurorack audio module for algorithmic melody generation. Check it out on toddbot.com. Ioama Prod posts to Twitter using a thermal camera with an Adafruit clue, displaying the output of an AMG 8833 IR array sensor on the clue display with CircuitPython. New dark blue colored mini SAM boards are now available along with previous colors. Each packs a hefty SAMD51 processor and are CircuitPython compatible. Check them out on minifigboards.com or get more information from BW Shockley on Twitter. Maker Diary posts to Twitter, power testing the CircuitPython-powered M60 keyboard, featured in the July 14th newsletter. It has very low power consumption, only 50 microamps in sleep mode, and 160 microamps when Bluetooth is connected, all thanks to the NRF52840 processor. Foz Text posts to Twitter, turning a Raspberry Pi into a PS2 keyboard emulator, essentially the reverse of a PS2 to USB adapter except the keyboard can come from the network and not just a USB keyboard, similar to an IPKVM using a Python script. Iron Vines posts to Twitter, putting together a moisture sensor and thermometer for seedlings using CircuitPython. Krantas posts to Twitter, testing CircuitPython 6.0.0 Alpha 2 on the ESP32-S2 Saola 1. Use your LEGO EV brick to unleash the power of Python programming using MicroPython. Simply install the EV MicroPython image onto any microSD card, use it to boot up your EV3 brick, and start programming straight away. Details available on education.lego.com. 
Micronote posts to Twitter, Atlas, a kit of parts designed around helping beginners take their first steps into the world of electronics. It can be programmed in MicroPython. Kit is available from Micronote on Etsy. Details available on micronote.tech. Humble Bundle is offering a pay-what-you-want bundle for programming and productivity by Mercury Learning Texts. $883 worth of materials is included, and a portion of each sale goes to the American Red Cross and Whale and Dolphin Conservation. Check it out on humblebundle.com. Writing a Python to C compiler in Python, an especially easy task to do since Python has a built-in parser library and because a number of CPython internals are exposed for extension writers. Details available from Phil Eaton at notes.eatonphil.com. Erica Joy Baker, Director of Software Engineering at GitHub, is featured in a recent Olay ad with a Python script noting the STEM gap based on gender and ethnicity. Check it out from Erica Joy on Twitter. Monkey patching is dynamically changing a piece of software such as a module, object, method, or function at runtime. Monkey patching is often used for bug fixes or prototyping software, especially when using external APIs or libraries. Details available at patricksoftwareblog.com and from testdriven.io on Twitter. What is Python used for? 10 plus coding uses for the Python programming language. Tutorial available on freecodecamp.org. Poetry dependency management for Python. Poetry helps you declare, manage, and install dependencies of Python projects, ensuring you have the right stack everywhere. Code available from Python Poetry on GitHub. Learn about using two Python functions, range versus enumerate, in this video available on realpython.com. The number of CircuitPython supported microcontrollers and single board computers continues to grow. There were no new boards added this week, but several are in development. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are five new Python and hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Every summer out in the Atlantic Ocean, storms form off the west coast of Africa and start moving towards North America. Sometimes they dissipate and are gone. Other times they keep growing as they move and can become hurricanes. Learn how to use your Pi Portal and CircuitPython to display current storm locations in this guide from Carter Nelson. This clock project uses CircuitPython, the Adafruit Metro M4 airlift, RGB matrix shield, and a 64 by 32 LED RGB panel matrix display. Wi-Fi connectivity with the Metro M4 airlift keeps your clock in sync with internet time using Adafruit I.O. Build a beautiful modern digital clock with a retro flare in this guide from John Park. This project pairs the Feather M4 with an Adafruit 8x8 Neo Matrix. Use black LED acrylic and a 3D printed grid to create an evenly diffused LED effect. Electronics are housed in an elegant looking snap fit case with a built-in on-off switch. LED animations are easily customizable with CircuitPython. Build a square pixel display in this guide from Noah and Pedro. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 266. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There were no new libraries this week, but there were a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, while Dan was finishing up HCI underscore BLEIO work for a pull request, he found that if he turned off the debug logging he created to help monitor the HCI commands and responses, it stopped working. He's currently debugging this. Needless to say, bugs that go away when you add print statements to help diagnose them are harder to find. He's now sending debug information directly to pins and monitoring them with a salier. He's making progress and hopes to submit a PR soon. Jeff started researching CAN bus. We'd like to implement it in CircuitPython for the SAM E5X series microcontrollers. So far, he's very much in learning mode, with a small network of STM32F405 feathers sending and receiving packets using code in MicroPython, which already supports CAN bus on the STM32 family of chips. The smaller boards in the foreground are CAN bus receivers, which translate from logic levels to special voltages and back. CAN bus is an interesting protocol, and the way it can reconstruct the digital signal, top two traces, with the two analog signals, bottom two traces, is pretty fascinating. CAN bus incorporates error detection features absent from simpler protocols like I2C. The Salier logic analyzer is pretty handy because it provides its own decoder for the CAN protocol. Do you have an application for CAN bus? Know of hobbyist level hardware that works with it? We'd love to hear about it. Drop us a note on Discord or Twitter. Melissa started converting some of our shell scripts to Python scripts. She got the first two done, but she has come to the conclusion that she needs to make a library with shell-like functions to make it so she doesn't repeat so much code as she goes along. This will also speed up the conversion process as she's able to reuse a lot of the functions. 
She also worked with me to write an e-ink bonnet guide. She worked on the usage page and described how to use the e-ink bonnet on the Raspberry Pi by going over a few examples, including how to force dithering for grayscale images. While she was at it, she added grayscale image mode support to the EPD library. Melissa also worked on updating the sharp memory display guide that Jeff had started. She mostly did a little light editing and verified everything was working as intended. She also added a section on the steps needed to set up the bad apple demo that you see on the product page. You can check out both guides in the Adafruit Learn system. PyCon AU is holding PyCon Line AU September 4th through 6, 2020. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyGotham is a New York City-based eclectic Pi-centric conference covering many topics. PyGotham TV is taking place October 2nd and 3rd, 2020, with a single track of talks presented online. Visit 2020.pygotham.tv for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the conference. The Hackaday Remoticon will take place everywhere November 6th through 8th, 2020. It's a weekend packed with workshops about hardware creation held virtually for all to enjoy. Call for proposals is now open. Details available on hackaday.com. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites like GitHub or Google. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 24,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.